All right, welcome back. This should be our last one. Let's give it a shot. So different types of metamorphism. So these are different ways in which we can apply heat and pressure to change a protolith into a metamorphic rock. So there's four different ways, and that includes contact metamorphism, regional metamorphism, burial metamorphism, and shock metamorphism. And we'll go through all of these. So contact metamorphism typically happens at a very small scale. It's metamorphism that occurs when rock is heated and chemically changed adjacent to an intruded body of hot magma. The intrusion is surrounded by what's called an aerial of altered rock. So contact metamorphism is when you have magma cutting through existing layers of rock that are already there, these protoliths, and this magma is so hot, it's applying heat to the rocks kind of right around it, it's altering them, changing them because of that high heat. That's contact metamorphism because these protoliths are in contact with magma. Excuse me. For example, we have a big blob of granitic magma bubbling up. What it's going to do is uh, send radiate heat through, in this case, this original limestone is the protolith. And if you remember back from a section, limestone is the protolith for marble. So but since, since this magma is in contact with this limestone, around this magma is this aerial of uh, marble. So that's how it works. So anytime we see any sort of igneous intrusion, any of this material is in contact with any of these other layers of rock, altering those layers of rock. So it happens on a very small scale because the metamorphism is typically very, very close, just kind of outlining these uh, intrusions. Uh, a great example is down in the uh, Grand Canyon. So we have these layers of sedimentary rock, and then we have this igneous kind of dike that kind of began to cut through it. And what you'll start to see is just above and just below, uh, you'll see, yeah, like right here, kind of hard to see, right here and right here, um, this rock has been altered, changed. Uh, typically, you'll see a color change. So this is kind of a more reddish, brownish color, but you can see where this black igneous intrusion comes into contact with this material, turn it kind of like a purplish almost, like a maroon color. And, uh, yeah. Yep. And so this is all sandstone. This is all sandstone. And when you metamorphose sandstone, you get quartzite, which is what you see here. So that's contact metamorphism. Regional metamorphism happens on a very large scale. This is metamorphism of an extensive area of crust often associated with plate convergence, convergent boundary collisions, subductions. Uh, it's the type of uh, metamorphism we see in origins, which is mountain building events, very large, broad areas of metamorphic, uh, zone of metamorphism. So this is a, a convergent boundary with continental crust colliding with <coughs> oceanic crust, creating a subduction zone, and typically because you're getting a lot of pressures built up here as these mountains crumple up, this is where you're getting regional metamorphism. Excuse me. Now, that's not the only way we make mountains, but this is one way that we can make metamorphic rocks based on regional metamorphism. And oftentimes it's very high grade because there's a lot of pressure and a lot of heat. So here we see the, the Grand Tetons. Here we see the Western um, Sierra Nevadas. And both uh, we can find migmatite or gneiss. So these are the highest grades of, of metamorphism um, that, we, that we find before things start to melt. And that's what we can see in these areas. Burial metamorphism, it's metamorphism that occurs after diagenesis as a result of the burial of sediment in deep basins. So as material continues to build up, below you'll get sedimentary rocks starting to form, that pro process of lithification we talked about lashing it. But just below that, a little bit deeper, things will start to metamorphose. So this is typical, typically a lower grade metamorphism. And you'll find these in uh, areas of uh, other sedimentary rock, but just below the region of diagenesis. A great example of a burial metamorphism uh, of rock is actually right uh, towards the top of the Mount Everest. It's called the uh, the yellow band. And so here's, here's Mount Everest, here's the top, 
And you see this kind of streak of yellow almost going through it. So this uh, this this yellow band that's the, the actually kind of a nickname of it. Uh, when people are hiking, you know, they use that uh, when they're climbing Mount Everest. They use that as a reference, like, oh, I got to the the yellow band. And so that's an area. Oh, excuse me, where limestone has been metamorphosed into marble. Just a little bit too much heat and pressure due to burial diagenesis, and that limestone turned to marble. Now, marble comes in all different colors. This one just happens to be yellow. Um, <clears throat> another great example of a metamorphism that's real close to home is the Four Peaks right here in Arizona. Uh, Four Peaks, if you look off to the west on a nice clear day, you can see it. Even, or excuse me, if you look out to the east on a nice clear day, you can see it off in the distance. Um, even here in Avondale, it's way, it's all the way, it's past Phoenix. It's way out there. But you can still see it on the horizon. In fact, you probably see it every day of your life. It's on the back of all the license plates. There it is right there. Four Peaks. So there's one, two, three, four of them. Now, that is... a uh, primarily metamorphosed sandstone, which is quartzite. Very hard, very durable rock. And that was due to burial metamorphism, large-scale burial metamorphism, where this initially was under an area of diagenesis, but got a little too much stuff uh, built up on top. So a little too much heat and pressure turned that sedimentary rock into metamorphic rock. Now, this is a mountain chain now, so then later on, tectonic uplift had to kind of tilt all these things up. Um, but uh, yeah, so the four peaks, metamorphic rocks, quartzite, just along the tops, just along the tips there. And then we get into something called shock metamorphism. Oh, this is my favorite. It occurs primarily at sites of meteorite impacts or large asteroid impacts. This is where you're getting boom, you know, big amount of pressure and a big amount of heat in a very small localized area, but just enough to cause things to alter and change. So high heat and pressures generating during the impact, def not only does it deform the underlying rock, but it also alters the minerals in those rocks. Um, it occurs, again, I don't know why this came up twice. Uh, hmm, interesting. Anywho, yeah, I don't know why that slide came up twice. But uh, here's a, a, a little diagram of how that works. So you get some projectile, an asteroid, a meteorite, traveling very fast, crashes into the Earth, and this area right around it, so much heat and pressure was applied, just to the small area, that you get shock metamorphism. Minerals have been altered. If minerals have been altered, therefore rocks have been, new rocks have been created. Different minerals would make different rocks. Now, as you get beyond that, you still get a lot of rocks breaking up, fracturing and, and brecciation, a lot of broken up rocks and turned into, you know, broken up sedimentary rocks, but that's still further out. You didn't receive all the heat and the pressure as the, the area closest to that impact. Now, the actual area, 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 super closest, well, that melted, but right beyond that, you get shock metamorphism. And we see that, uh, for example, at Behringer Crater, uh, right here in uh, Arizona. Now, this is all sedimentary rocks, um, sandstones and limestones, and uh, but when this was smacked with the impact, it altered some of the minerals in that sandstone and limestone to make uh, some shocked minerals called coesite and stichovite. Um, I believe more on that in the assignment for this unit. All right. So those are the four types of metamorphism, and that really brings us to the end, oh my goodness, of the rock cycle. So we talked about in unit uh, six, I think, yeah, six about igneous rocks, breaking those down, weathering and erosion, building up, depositing sediment to create sedimentary rocks in unit seven, and then applying heat and pressure and, and, met, and metamorph metamorph or metamorphizing uh, existing protoliths, whether it's sedimentary rock, igneous rock, or it can even be existing other metamorphic rock, a little more heat, a little more pressure, alters them into a new rock. And the process goes over, starts over and over and over again. Remember, it doesn't have to go in a circle. It can go any which way. You can go from igneous rock to metamorphic, back to igneous, to sedimentary, to sedimentary, to sedimentary, to igneous, to metamorphic. 
it can go all around. It's just we talk about it in this circle because it's a, the story makes sense. Well, with that being said, my friends, that brings us to the uh, the end of our lecture. We're going to try something new at the end. I'm, hopefully this works. So um, make sure. So it, as I'm talking, I think if at some point right now or sometime soon, you'll see a pop up. Make sure to watch this this video that pops up. It's an awesome video on metamorphism. Um, you can see the, the link in the in the video right here. I'll also put it down in the subscription subscription the description I'll also put the, the the link to this video down in the description because i'm not sure how well this is going to work so at some point if you haven't already you should see a pop-up make sure you watch that awesome video on metamorphism it's really short it really brings everything together quick watch and if it doesn't pop up again just click on the link down in the description as you're watching this here on youtube or if not that's the that's the url for it all right until next time i'll see ya